the Fosman people got the video thing fixed right in time, so we're good to go. Um, I'm Kenneth Hoster, I'm part of the HPC team and at Ghent University. And let's say the organizer of the Devon today, so I'm going to be running around like crazy. Um, I'm just going to give the word to Ewald, who is our team lead at uh, the HPC team at Ghent University. He's going to do a quick introduction before we go to the real first talk, which is classroom. Uh, Right, so welcome everyone. Um, I'm glad you're so numerous. Um, in the first few slides, I'm just going to give you an overview of what we do at Ghent University and uh, the HPC team, and also the Salvation Students. So, I gather most of you will know about how I perform this computing. Um, the HPC team in Ghent was started in 2008. It's quite recent with the intent of making it a single point of contact for researchers with questions related to microphone computing. Uh, and so we do present basically set our mission is centralization of HPC with respect to infrastructure, expertise, support, and training. How many are we? How many people are there? We're, we're eight, so I'm supposed to be the team leader. Uh, State the Wirt is the technical team lead, uh, Kenneth Hoster, who is organizing the dev room, for which kudos to guy, uh, is, uh, well, you can call him head of user support, and also involved in this easy build project, which he will elaborate further on. Uh, Walter is a sysadmin, uh, Jens is also a sysadmin, and does some uh, user support. Kenneth is our storage expert. Uh, Andy is uh, well, low level or deep level, whatever you want to call it. Uh, User support and sysadmin, and then you, you and Higgs are the newest acquisition. Generally, is, is uh, so that's the HPC team. We take care of all the users at Ghent University, um, but we also go a bit beyond. Uh, and you might have seen the banner outside the door. There's also something called the Flemish Supercomputer Center. Um, that basically brings together all the supercomputer, well, in the, the individual HPC teams uh, of Flounders into one virtual organization. And so far, we've been maybe a bit virtual, but we're getting more and more real, uh, especially since the, the, the advent of our, of our new HPC manager at the Brussels level. So that's, and, uh, and Jens said that state scout is a uh, Located at the Hebula Stichting, who's kindly providing us with a lot of funds for UHPC. And he's so managing all the HPC teams and founders uh, from all the five main university associations. So, briefly, to, to just give you a sketch of what, where we are, where we are in, in the global picture and the European picture. Um, you can, you can categorize high performance computing, you can categorize supercomputers in three tiers. So at the lowest tier you have tier two, maybe if you, even if you go below that, tier three is like your laptop or the server which you have at home. Uh, at the tier two level we're talking about, let's say, 500k. 500 tap and you have, you have a decent size supercomputer, which is an amount that's doable for universities, individual universities and companies. Uh, and you get about, let's say, a thousand cores from the Finiman and so on. One ramp up is tier one. That's everything times ten. That means scale times ten, but also money times ten, actually a bit more. Uh, tier one facilities are located uh, in Ghent also, as it happens, but they're managed by the Flemish Supercomputer Center. So they're not really ours, they're really uh, from the Flemish uh, Supercomputer Center level. And then of course at the top level is, is um, the praise, the, the facilities that praise offer. That's what, what is it? 10 supercomputers, 10 tier 0 supercomputers, that's just a shitload of money, what you're talking about. So tier 2 is, is basically capacity computing, at university level, that's what we're involved in. That's our primary mission of getting that infrastructure there and uh, maintaining it. 
and it's unfortunately spread out all over Ghent um, because we started in 2008 with uh, a data center that was not yet there. So it was installed or first clustered in the basement of the record building, which is actually under the water level, which is not a very good idea. Uh, then we moved to the university campus, we placed a cluster there, but now we're happily consolidating in our new data center. And just to give you a very brief overview uh, of what, what kind of two, two infrastructure we have, so it's always showing off, comparing deck size and stuff, stuff like that. Um, we have seven clusters um, ranging between 30 nodes and what is it, 200 nodes. Uh, quite a few cores, uh, and all the details are on here, which I don't know too much about. Officially, our, our cluster is called after uh, Simon Steven, who is a famous, uh, well, Flemish born, but then moved to Holland, uh, scientist, mathematician, uh, and, uh, well, Homo universalis, you know what call it. But unofficially, well, we had to name our cluster something. Uh, we were planning on having a lot of clusters, and then you need something that with names that you have a lot of, and then Pokemon spring to mind. Uh, so we've we've decided to name all our clusters uh, with Pokemon names. So unofficially, we're called the Pokemon cluster in the uh, clusters. But what makes your life a little bit pleasant? And no one's talking about Simon Steven. Actually, everyone's talking about the Pokemon names. And if you happen to have been blessed with my age, you don't know what Pokemon are. So the first time you were on that machine, you're talking, who invents those names? It's a uh, <laughs> It's a generation thing, I guess. Um, very importantly, so um, that's tier two. So that's what really is owned by the University of Ghent itself. That's what we manage, what the team manages. It's a lot of work. We're only eight. We have seven clusters. We have to do training, user support, and so on. On top of that, we're also responsible for this machine. Uh, so it's a tier one supercomputer of Flanders. There's only one at the moment that we know of. Um, it's called Muck because it's our prerogative. We named it according to Pokemon. But as I said, it's owned and operated by the Flemish Supercomputer Center. Uh, it's pretty powerful in the sense that we, we landed in the top 500 of supercomputers when it was inaugurated in June 2012. Well, twice a week, actually. 118, 118. And then we're now we're gradually dropping down the list, of course, which makes sense. Uh, but we're still doing quite well. Obviously, the economic crisis has nothing to do with that. Uh, and currently, we're at, we're at space 306, uh, which is likely to be 400 or something the next time around. So all in all, this is about 8,500 cores, uh, which is the largest supercomputer in Flanders that we know of. No longer in Belgium, though. The founder goes to uh, our French counterparts, for which respect. Um, you can, this supercomputer, compute time is available on the supercomputer, uh, but you have to make an application. Every information is available either on the website of the Columbia Supercomputer Center or on our website, um, and you're free to ask questions about that. Like I said, uh, we're only eight people at Ghent University. Uh, we're taking care of our tier two systems. We're also taking care of tier one because we have to do technical exploitation. So uh, no wonder we're always interested in uh, getting interesting profiles. So if you if you are interested in a job, I'm not saying we're hiring at the moment, but if you're interested, just send us your CV and we're definitely going to take into account. Thanks for your attention. Okay, any questions? general about HPC or about our infrastructure? What does it take you? Yeah. You have to fill in a boring form. That's basically it. Well, you, you might need some, con you might need to have some consulting from, from uh, maybe the local university uh, who supports you. Um, but if not, you can you're free to send us mails or send us, that's what we're doing. No, if I'm not from, from, from Belgium. If you're not from Belgium, that would mean that we have to discuss it, but it's not impossible. You basically, you have to send me an email. Yes. <laughs> what problems are you working on? 
What problems? We're not working on the problems ourselves, of course. It's always the scientists. We're, we're basically technical staff. We're just maintaining the systems and helping the scientists. But what problems are scientists working on? Um, you have uh, computational chemists who are looking for new materials to improve, for instance, the reactor cell wall <coughs> in nuclear reactors to improve a mix there. Uh, we have um, computational fluid dynamics people who want to improve um, the chemical reactor design or want to make a better atmospheric model of, for instance, uh, pol pollution above Antwerp. Just saying something from the top of my head now. Um, what else? What's fancy? Uh, bioinformatics. Maybe that's uh, fun. So looking for interesting uh, sequences to apply in enzy enzyme engineering and so on. So I mean, basically the variety of what the research you can find in flowers. That's what what's, what's going to run. So it's uh, eight, eight separate clusters, and there's eight people? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Do they come from different vendors? Yes. And, and does that, does the cluster management increase your workload because it's different? Yes. <laughs> I'm not an informatician, so um, I'm not allowed to work on the systems. So there's seven. There's seven guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, do, you, do you find that increases your workload because they're all different skill sets? Yes, it does, but it's a, it's a cost issue as well. We shop with different vendors because Depending on the time frame you're buying in, one guy is more expensive than the other. Or maybe IBM is cheaper for storage and Dell is cheaper for computer machines. We also have developed and we use tools and we have developed some tools ourselves to make our life easier yeah. in that respect. So, so that we can just do the same thing once and so apply it to all the machines. Picking in on how the, the last procurement basically we just bought hardware, we just bought pizza, pizza boxes and uh, team did the installation by themselves, which made actually our life a lot easier. Because if we order it with, well, maybe we're a bit picky on that respect, but if we order it from, from a vendor, we usually end up spending as much time in reinstalling or reconfiguring to our needs. What's the distribution you use? Uh, do you use one distribution? No. Scientific units. That's, that's what we do, but in, in Lurgen, for example, they might be using something else. But we're trying to get to a more homogeneous situation. Mm -hmm. if, if you want oh, to the same place. Okay. It's almost like it's based. It's okay. Yes. Okay. So do you have a common batch system? Batch system, system from the past? Yeah, PBS, the Torque. Torque. The open and source. And the distributes the workload over the past test. Maybe one more, one last one. Uh, is it a completely suitable password? Do you have accelerators like GPUs or FPGA boards? In Gantt we don't have GPUs, but in Leuven we have GPUs. So that's the idea of the Flemish supercomputer system to diversify. I mean, Leuven takes care of GPUs, I mean, we don't want to do that. We're uh, wanting to compute uh, and big data, that's what our uh, mission statement is. And then, wow. Uh, <laughs> Leuven is uh, more specializing in GPUs. Okay, sorry we have to wrap yeah. it up now. Let's go. Thanks for the.